Hello everyone, it's me, Matsmas. Hope you're having a wonderful day. You know, I love my tanks. You all know that. If you're on my channel, you should also as well. However, a lot of people challenge me on, Hey Matt, what's your favorite war movie? What's your favorite movie that involves tanks? And a lot of you may think of Fury or some of the more modern day tank related movies. But there aren't many tank dedicated movies out there. But there is one that has always been true to my heart as being the greatest tank movie ever produced and I will hold this to the end of days until someone brings out anything better. Nothing has matched it, I don't think nothing ever will match it. It is the most incredible movie in the world for tanks, known as The Beast or The Beast of War in certain contexts around the world. It is a 1988 American war film directed by Kevin Reynolds and written by William Matrasomi, based on his play of Nana Watai. The film follows the crew of a Soviet T-55 main battle tank who became lost during the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. The film is a very high cult favourite status in spite of its low box office statistics. It did not do so great in the movies. However, if you're a tank or armoured enthusiast, you're going to absolutely love this movie. If you haven't watched it before, seriously, wake up, stop watching this video right now, go put it in. We're all in this, uh, you know, quarantine thing going on right now. It's a perfect time to find a good movie. Trust me, you're going to enjoy this. If you like armored warfare, you like Russian military equipment, you're going to absolutely love this movie. Now, I'm not going to spoil the plot for you here, folks, um, and be careful because there may be a couple of small minor spoilers in this video today, but it basically follows a crew that is somewhat sick of the war, about half of them are, and the rest are just really obsessed with the tank. The commander himself is an absolute beast, uh, literally a beast other than just the tank. He loves his tank to death. Uh, nicknamed as, uh, well I'm not going to spoil it for you, he has a nickname in the tank movie that you'll uh, see quite quickly. And uh, it's very vivid. The, the movie is raw, uh, it's not messing around, it tells you what a real tank crew would have been like during the Afghanistan war. Tight, close environment. Everyone's working for one another inside the tank as a family, even though you may potentially hate each other inside the vehicle. It really brings to light how awful war is and how, you know, intricate it is when you're part of a tank crew. There's so much to do. There's so much you've got to think about. And in this movie, it's, it's kind of sad because the tank gets, you know, a lot of stuff thrown at it, but it keeps on ticking. Now, I must admit, um, when I watched this when I was younger, I don't think I appreciated it as nearly as much as I did when I was older. You know, this was definitely one of those war movies of like, wow, this is good. But once I rewatched it over and over and over again throughout my, you know, growing up, I started to appreciate it more and more and found a fascination more with Russian military vehicles, Russian doctrine. Uh, now, it is an American war movie, so of course it is, you know, uh, using American actors, using American style, uh, uh, you know, sayings, you know, uh, up for loading and on the way for firing of the main gun, which of course is not how the Russians speak. But it made sense for them to go that way. Um, and the way in which they talk as a tank crew is just incredible. Now, there's also some really nice side stories inside the movie as well. Uh, sort of, you know, mutiny and, and people having problems with each other in the tank crew. The crew is definitely toxic. They're not the most friendly crew in the world. But when it comes to go time and actually fighting inside of this tank, um, they pull together and make it happen. Now, of course, the Afghanistan war is not exactly the most, uh, you know... <laughs> How would I say this? Uh, politically correct war? I don't think any war is politically correct. But in this movie, you also see the, the side of Afghanistan that you would not normally see in some other movies. You know, you're seeing uh, the Russians really go into town. Uh, they're not messing around. They, they cause a lot of uh, devastation and, and a lot of hatred, I think, towards the Afghanis in this movie. But the same applies to the Taliban and the Mujahideen in the movie also. They also have their own uh, sort of situations going on. You see that the the crew isn't the only ones having problems within you know their teams and within their storyline. And it just it's such a good in-depth movie. Um, you'll be shocked as to where the story goes, the plot line goes. Um, if you like the T-55, then this is definitely the movie for you. The tank it gets beaten to a pulp all the way through. Uh, but as I said, it keeps ticking. But when you start noticing how the tank operates and saying, you know what, this thing is incredible. And it really does kind of tell you, like, actually this tank in a real combat scenario is pretty damn good. Everybody gives the T-55 a hard time, uh, you know, saying, oh, it's a cheap mass-made tank. They're not that great. I think in this movie, it totally proves that wrong in every sense of the word. Now, I know it's a movie, I know it's Hollywood, but the tank, you just fall in love with the tank more than you do the crew. That's my personal opinion. I, I fell in love with the tank, just as a piece of military hardware and thinking, 
Jesus, this thing keeps going. It's just absolutely incredible. The crew commander, really, though, is, is one of the key blocks that pull it all together. You'll, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but you'll notice the way in which he kind of uh, slowly dissipates into a sort of madness um, as a crew commander and leader of this tank crew. And it really just starts creating that animosity and, and hatred for one another even more and more. Please, folks, take a look at this movie. You've got to remember that this was made in 1988, okay? The budget for this movie was $8 million. $8 million. Fury's budget for its movie was 68 to $80 million. Okay, $80 million. Now, of course, between the timeline of, you know, 1988 and, you know, I think uh, Fury came out in roughly 2014, 2015 time. Yes, financial restraints change a little bit in the way in which funding is and, you know, it equates a little differently, but still... 68 million compared to 8 million i don't think the math quite adds up that much this movie was a budget movie it did not do great in the movies honestly it really did not do so great however it deserved to it really did um you know fury yeah it's a pretty good movie but for the most part it's just a cringe um whereas this one as i said it's very raw it's in your face it's really making you realize like what tank crews of this period in that time and in that war went through and the same applies for you know the civilians and the people around uh this tank crew what they were involved in whether it be the air crews or the mujahideen or you know just normal civilians very very good movie please folks go check it out and if you keep asking me what is my favorite war movie you're probably going to get me to say the beast uh, because it is so 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 good so please uh, if you want to talk about it, come to my Discord, come hang out. Uh, if you want to be notified of any upcoming videos in the future, please uh, hit the bell by the subscribe button. And uh, if you want to, you know, support my channel, I would really appreciate you go check out my Patreon account. Hope to see you all next time, folks. Have a wonderful day. All the best. Bye-bye.